Welcome back to the Pulse of St. Louis. You know, AT&T and Oasis Institute are working together to help protect older adults from cyber crimes, and they're doing it by offering them a new series of tech training that focuses on prevention. Joining me now, Elaine and Barry Silver, they are training participants, Amy Vandevelde, National Connections Program Manager with Oasis Institute, and John Sondag, President of AT&T Missouri. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate it. Let's start by talking, John, about this series of training. What is it, ab what is it about and what's all included in it? Well, Shirley, it's very important that uh, you know all of our customers today, young and old, uh, are more and more involved in technology. and. The, the risk in using those devices. And so uh, we've worked with the Oasis Institute now for several years. Uh, we've contributed, I think, up to five and a half million dollars over the last several years to help them bring training primarily to our um, uh, members of Oasis and our, our uh, senior citizens um, to really help educate them on various aspects of technology and how to use their devices safely. Uh, we are working now on a, a $600,000 contribution yeah. Uh, for the next two years to bring s some of this new training and focusing a lot of things on cybersecurity and how they can be safe when they're on their devices and computers. Right, so we're talking like cell phones, iPads, exactly. the whole nine. Exactly, their computer, the whole yeah. nine yards. So yeah. more and more people, uh, they do, Oasis does a great job of training folks on how to use the technology, how to use these devices. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's the, the risk that you use when you're, when you're on your phone, it's just like being on your computer uh, and those that have ill intent and want to try to, um, you know, compromise your personal information, um, it's you, you need training into how to recognize this and how to prevent it. And that's the the great job that Oasis does. And that's why AT and T is so very much uh, appreciative of this partnership we have with them. Yeah, Amy, fill me in. Tell me about o the Oasis Institute, and then tell me about the training that's offered. Sure. Um, a lot of people in St. Louis know the Oasis Institute through our tutoring program in the schools, but we do a lot more than that. And one of the things that we do for 17 years, thanks to the contribution from AT&T, is to pe teach people about cybercrime prevention and how to use devices. You mentioned all the different devices, and so we've been working really hard to stay up with technology ourselves to offer people training on their computers, on their PCs, um, their tablets, their smartphones, and um, we've been trying to move along with technology, so we also offer something called Ask a Techie every week at two locations in St. Louis where people can walk in with their device or bring their question and get some help. Yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Silver, did you take your classes together as a team? Were you partners in the classroom? Yes. We, we took yes. it together, Okay, yes. so tell me, which classes did you take, and then what did you think about the classes? Mrs. Silver, you go first, and then Mr. Silver, you follow up, Well, please. we got an iPhone about a year and a half ago, and we could do the basics, but we knew there was more to it. And we, when we saw this course, we said, maybe we should go. And I'm glad we did. And we did learn a lot. What did you learn? Um, we learned about um, how to turn it on and off. <laughs> That's good. It's a oh, good and start. Fun, yeah. fun things, too, how yeah. to draw on it and, and things like that but I mean really how to um, how to figure out what is important to you not everything was important to us and you would kind of go over it and see if does this apply to us or not and we found quite a few things that did apply to us yeah what did you think of the class mr. silver I thought it was very good the instructor was very good he was very helpful um, it was a small class, there were only seven people there, so, and he had an assistant as well, so between the two of them, if you had any problems trying to do what he was showing us how to do, they, somebody was there to help us. What did you learn in the class? Uh, I learned a lot of functions that the, that the phone does that I never even knew it uh, existed. And probably never would have thought about. No, I wouldn't have. I mean, we knew the basics. We knew how to text and email and and Google search and I can watch the Cardinals game and <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, but there were a lot of other things. I mean, I had no idea. I mean, just on the settings itself, you go in there and there's so much in there. Uh, you know, they, they, they cover the basics. The other thing they gave us was an actual printed book, which nobody gives anymore. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was, uh, that was so great. It's, so yeah. it's helpful to refer to it later on after the class is over. Did you ever think that by using this technology that you could possibly become a victim of cyber crimes? Well, uh, I'm an auditor by training, so I'm, I'm naturally skeptical. 
Um, so I think I'm probably better along those lines than most people are. Um, so I, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly uh, happy with, with my own knowledge in that area. Uh, I have a kind of a philosophy that uh, if in doubt, delete it when I get an email or something that just doesn't look right. And I figure anybody who wants to contact me, they have other means to contact me. If I've deleted something that I shouldn't have deleted, I'll hear from them again. And if I deleted something I should have deleted, then I will never hear from them again. That hits the nail right on the head, John, because a lot of us, we do get these emails and we're curious. And so we go, oh, let me see what that is. And bam, you open yourself up yeah. you know, to possibly becoming a victim. Tell me about some of the most common cyber crimes that we're seeing today. Well, I think a couple of them, you know, the phishing is one. And that's really where, you know, you're going to get an email uh, and it's, it looks like it may come from AT&T and it may have the AT&T name and the globe. Uh, and they're asking you for information to verify information about your account. Uh, sometimes they ask for some personal information. Um, and it's really hard to detect. And you're going, well, okay, I, that's my company. I might as well you know, give them information. But it's very important to, to take a look. And you'll find that you know, sometimes the, uh, the, 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 the URL looks kind of strange. Or you'll when you find say the URL for folks at home who where may it's not come. Know what So it when you say a .com or .net or something, it, it will look strange. It doesn't look like the, the normal kind. Or you'll find, quite honestly, grammatical errors uh, and spelling errors. A lot of these come from overseas and people really aren't uh, fluent in English and they'll try to mimic that uh, and they'll make some grammatical errors on how they try to ask you. So a lot of that should be a clue when you get that and, and when you see something that looks suspicious and your, your advice is great, anything that doesn't look that you're not 100% sure, the best thing is just to, to delete it. Right. Um, you know, we also see uh, things on spoofing and that's where you know, you're gonna get something that on the caller ID it may come in that, hey, this is from your bank or this is from uh, the, the police department. And they try to disguise who it's really sending, really trying to kind of get your confidence. And once you get that, once again, they'll be asking you for information. Uh, hey, we need this information or we need you to pay for something. Really trying to get information, private information from you. So when, when you see things like that, first, you know, it's, it's good to be suspicious. Most, most companies that you deal with and your vendors are not going to ask you for personal information via your computer or, or you know, over the Internet. So best thing to do is to, you know, once again, delete it. Uh, and then call that company. You know, usually, you know, if it's AT&T, you've got an 800 number to call or, or whoever it is and ask them, hey, I just got this call. Is this legitimate? Good points. Got to take a break. Stay with us. We will be back in a moment. We'll continue the conversation in about two minutes. Back after this. Welcome back to the Pulse of St. Louis. Right now we are talking about how to prevent you from becoming a victim of cyber crimes. And Amy, I'm sure you've probably heard from people who participate in your programs at, a, at the Oasis Institute. What kinds of things do they tell you in regards to their concerns? So one of the main things is that people who are over 50 um, are very interested in staying in touch with loved ones. But when spoofing or phishing comes from somebody that you, that you know, it, it's harder to detect sometimes for people. So I love Barry's approach, but not everybody feels comfortable deleting things. Right. And so uh, the other thing that I've talked to people about is run it by somebody else. And you know, I even got a call from my 20 year old daughter saying, will the IRS call me? Cause someone's calling me from the IRS. And I said, the IRS will never call you. Um, but it was, interesting to her because she just filed her taxes for the first time. So, you know, we think about, um, we want to be aware that all of us are targets. Our personal information is something that cybercrime, uh, people who carry out cybercrime are looking for, and it doesn't have to do with age. Um, the difference would be that millennials are more likely to fall for a phishing scheme, but if an older adult falls for a phishing scheme, they will actually lose more, double the amount of money that a millennial will. So that's, you know, one of the things that we just want people to be aware of. And, and people um, who are over 50 are generally more um, alert to these kinds of scams and paying more attention. I think when we talked to, when John was talking about the phishing, it's always great to hover over the address and see who it's from and you'll be surprised. I did have an email from supposedly <laughs> AT&T just yesterday in my email box and they are my internet provider and it was not at all from any uh, website that is associated with AT&T, but it did look legitimate. Right, and that's so, the thing and, and that's what makes it so hard to figure out whether it is legitimate or not 
Mrs. Silva, you're nodding your head. Have you yes. received any of these emails? Well, I, I have, but my granddaughter uh, emailed me the other day, and it just didn't look right. It, usually it's high Grammy or whatever, and I didn't get that. It was just a line like, uh, look, look at this and see what you think or something. And I said, this is suspicious. It just isn't her. And of course I ran it by Barry because he's so skeptical. <laughs> and he said, I think you better call her. And I did. And she had no idea. She had no idea. Someone obviously had, had gotten her email address and they, they were sending out, I, I don't know what it was, because I didn't click on it. I didn't but dare I, click on it. We, we deleted it, yeah. obviously, because she didn't know anything yeah, about it. Yeah, and she didn't so. know. Right. Man, so you were so wise oh not my God. to click on it and she to run it by Barry. It. She couldn't believe <laughs> yeah. it. I saw something. <laughs> <laughs> and you did the right thing. And I did the right thing. Well, yeah. I think that's a point that I want to make, that older adults often have a lot of knowledge and they have a lot of, of uh, savvy behind them and years of living. And sometimes I think it's very beneficial to, for them to be able to influence, for instance, if my, my daughter had asked my mom, you know, my mom would have said, Amanda, the IRS doesn't call you. And so um, older adults have a lot of knowledge that they can share with, with younger people if they're, if they're open to hearing the advice. Yeah. Who, who and, are these older adults you're <laughs> <laughs> Other people. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, now, John, I want to touch a little bit more on something that Amy was talking about. With our older adults, they stand to lose a lot more yes. if they are victim of cybercrime yes. as opposed to, say, millennials. And why is that? Well, I think just because of their station in life, most of them are more financially secure. They probably have more assets. They own a home, something that millennials don't. And so. Um, they may get tricked easier, actually, the, the millennials. You know, what the millennials are very comfortable with technology and sometimes too comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so they don't question things as maybe uh, as we would. But, uh, you know, if they're going to lose something, they're not going to lose much because they don't have as much to lose. And I think that's a point that, that Amy uh, was making that, you know, if you do fall for the scam, it could cost you your savings and your, your house or, and a lot more to lose. Yeah, yeah. So, Amy, for the folks who are probably just tuning in, mm -hmm. just give me a couple of solid pointers, safety tips, if, if you will, of sure. how to prevent becoming a victim of cyber. Sure, I'll give you two. Um, one is if you get an email and you're, you're not certain who it's from, um, don't click on any links. You can just take your mouse or if you're using a mobile device, your finger, and you can hover over the email address and see who it's from. It won't be from um, whoever it says it's from. And, and John made a good point that it, it used to be that you could really tell um, that something was a phishing scam because it, it really it had poor grammar. It didn't have the right logo in it. I mean, this one yesterday had the AT&T logo in it. And I know it well because I work closely with AT&T and it looked very legitimate. Um, but I hovered over the email address and it was from uh, a crazy email address that didn't make any sense. So that's one. Second, if you get a phone call um, on any of your phones, but your mobile phone and it's your own phone number, that's spoofing. Um, and people will often answer it because they're like, why, yes, I'm like, not why would you answer right? Yeah. And, yeah. and then they, had, they know that it's an active line right. through that spoof. So if, if you know, it's one of those things that people raised in the 30s, 40s, and 50s were taught to be very polite and answer questions politely. And so they're not always used to screening calls as much as younger generations are. It's good to screen your calls. If someone needs to get a hold of you, they'll leave you a message and then you can respond. That's right. Good point. Mm -hmm. Got to take a break. Stay with us. We're back in a moment. <laughs>